Person, you. And if you take part of the quiz, that is a link on the slide. Legal form, so you don't use paper. It's bit.ly bit.ly slash VBQ answer sheet. Bit, oh. Bit.ly slash VBQ answer sheet. Also on screen is a celebrity's face that's been lightly distorted. If you'd like a little brain teaser before we begin, who could it be? If you're watching from elsewhere, if you're watching online, then you answer normally, answer by whatever way you normally do. You don't need to worry about the link. That's just so we can corroborate uh, answers, so we can check who has won the 20 pound bar tab. That's right, there's a 20 pound bar tab up for grabs. Let me see if we Oh, <laughs> 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 Well, there is the first season Premier League is cricket. No doubt. So I'd be very worried about that. Oh my 
We will be starting shortly. We've just posted the link online, so hopefully we'll have some online people joining us as well. It's all go, honestly. What exciting time. But as we say, there is a distorted picture of someone, an international celebrity and friend of the show, not necessarily, on the screen. Can you tell us who it is? Don't actually have to tell us, but it's a little brain teaser before we get going, while people join us. Well, well, well. Uh, Long time no see, Jack. Long, long time no see. How are you? This officially is the first time we've seen each other in about two years, probably. Yeah. It's a little, the, the self isn't quite there. We're, uh, it's the first physical quiz in about, I don't know, what, six months, seven months. So we're, we're still fighting our feet, but. Mm. If you haven't noticed, we are actually in the burn, Hill Beach Bar. So it's very exciting. Hopefully we can be heard. Um, if not, that's fine too. Reminder, while we wait uh, to come up with a, a team name, the best team name will get to pick a round for next week. And uh, to, if you're here in person, I think everyone already has, but there is a link on screen, bit.ly slash VBQ answer sheet. If you'd like to enter for the 20 pound bar tap, if you put your answers through this, then we will get them marked by our team of professional markers. Hopefully you can hear us at home, if you're there. Sorry if you can't, but all the answers will be on screen. So, all the, all the, all the questions as well. So don't worry too much. Right, what do you reckon? Should we make a start in a, in a one or two minutes? Yeah, let's go with two minutes. Two minutes, that sounds good. You might be able to see us in a very small way on screen if you're at home, uh, but it's okay. There's not much to see anyway. We're just sitting here, we're sitting having a great time, not doing anything currently. Uh, Jack is wearing his iconic uh, Jack jumper, his white jumper, and I'm wearing my head of quizzes uniform. Uh, so don't worry, everything is as usual. I can't believe we're finally here, Hugo. It's been a long ride. Honestly, it's, it's, I can't believe it. Who would have thought it possible for us to be presenting the Vern Bar quiz from the Vern, it's from the Vern Bar. I mean, I mean, even four hours ago, we didn't really know how this was going to work tech-wise, but... No, we had, a, we had a long time setting it up. Many thanks to a shout out to Elliot Lewis, tech officer, for his hard work. We're here now. We're here now. Uh, before, just before we get started, it's time to reveal who this mystery celebrity is. We all love him, maybe. Some people maybe don't like him. Either way, it's international superstar and friend of the show. Hang on, hang on. The big reveal. Gordon Brown! Former British Prime Minister Gordon Brown. Of course, who else could it be? Who else would it be? Well, well. well. There we go. Well, well, well. <laughs> Huzzah, look at that. It's the Vern Bar quiz. It's time to make a start. So if you're watching at home, uh, get a piece of paper or something to write down your scores on. If you're here, make sure get have one person in your team write down the answers on the Google form. And it'll be a great time. So here we go. Without any further ado. Jack, can you see the questions anywhere? Yeah, I can just about see them from that, that monitor over there. 
Okay. Yeah. Well, you can, right, you can read the questions that you can see. That's fine. That works. Okay, so without any further ado, here is the first round. It's the links round. Jack, how does the links round work? Okay, so the links round works as follows. You're going to see 10 questions. Nine of those 10 are seemingly generalized questions. Actually, they have a link. The tenth, the tenth question is, what is that link? So what link the previous nine seemingly knowledge answers together? It's a little bit like uh, the game Linky or the television program Only Connect. So if you've seen or played either of those, it's a bit like that. It's not that much like Only Connect, don't worry. No, no, it's easier than Only Connect. Okay, so question one. Jack, can you read that? <laughs> yeah, I can, just about. Uh, so question number one, what item associated with a particular genre of fiction is sometimes called a hand lens in laboratory context. Which item associated with a particular genre of fiction is sometimes called a hand lens in laboratory context? Uh, just to clarify, if you're not in the bar, you do not have to use Google Forms. In fact, please do not use Google Forms if you're not in the bar. That will slightly complicate the issue. Only people using Google Forms should be people who are eligible for the for the uh, bar tab, and that is people who are currently in the burn. Don't worry, there is still a prize uh, for for um, whatever it's called. That's fine. Yeah, which um, is a prize for people watching at home, but we don't know what it is yet. So, so yeah, for people that are here in the quiz, uh, personally here present with us, um, you're playing for a twenty pound bar tab to spend at the burn. Um, very exciting stuff. So that's why we're doing the Google Forms, so we can mark your things for you. Um, this is not self-marked, because obviously if it's self-marked, you'll all get 50 out of 50. So, uh, so yeah. Question, question number two, without any further ado. Question number two, which 1979 hit written by Debbie Harry and Chris Stein was recently covered by Miley Cyrus? Which 1979 hit written by Debbie Harry and Chris Stein was recently covered by Miley Cyrus? Uh, just a reminder that there is a link between these first nine questions. If you work out what the link is sooner, it might help you get some of the other ones. Maybe. Hopefully, we'll see. The freshest bar tab is a very good question. Yes, the H-code bar tab. <laughs> I think I might let's see go. Like it was, oh, are you the alphabet family? Um, so there's currently still being adjudicated, I'm pretty sure. You should find out very soon. Um, it promise you, for the winning team, it will be there. Um, uh, it's, it's tricky. We all got degrees as well, I'm sorry. Right. Question, question number three. Uh, question number three, the what words are missing from this humorous Etsy gift? Not a belly laugh, I will say. <laughs> uh, but I think humor is intended. Just to describe it for people who perhaps can't see, it okay. is, like Jack, uh, the picture shows a Snickers bar behind, it, like, in a in a box, in a red box, and it has a text written at the top and text written on the bottom, and it's a classic phrase that makes this a humorous gift. Mm, what could it be? And a reminder, it does fit the link. If you work out what the link is, it might help you. Just to confirm, um, the 20 pound bar tab will be with you tonight. So the winners will get it tonight. Um, yeah, don't worry. If, if you're here and you want us to go back to a question, you, you ask us and we'll go back to it. But uh, as we want to get you to be able to spend your bar tab, we might move on. Uh, so question number four. Yeah. Question number four. What is the third book in the His Dark Material series by Philip Pullman? What is the name of the third book in the His Dark Material series by Philip Pullman? Personal favourite. You like this one, don't uh, you? Great. I, I thought of you when I wrote this question. I'm a huge fan. Great, a great series, would recommend. What's your favourite dark material? I'll give that away. I like coal. Jack muted me for that. Justifiably. So even though we're not on Zoom anymore, I can still meet Hugo, which is incredibly satisfying. Because he's got a nice sound. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It, you know, with great power comes great annoyingness. Question number five. Uh, which fibre reinforced plastic is sometimes referred by the acronyms GRP and GFRP? 
which fiber reinforced plastic is sometimes referred by the acronyms GRP and GFRP. I think I mean referred to by, but you, you, know, you know. Yeah, I thought I'd just forgive the grammatical error there. You didn't forgive it, you read it out. <laughs> That's okay, thank you though. Mm, what could the link be? What could the answer be? Only time will tell. Question number six. <laughs> Oh, I, I can can I read out this one? No, it's fine, I can do it. In 1984, the staff of Durham Marks and Spencer's shop gave Durham Cathedral an artwork by Mark Angus depicting the Last Supper from a bird's eye view. What form does this artwork take? I'm very impressed with the Jack read that because it's about four metres away from him in white text of an optically conducive to reading background. My eyesight isn't exactly what you so said. So there is an artwork in Durham Cathedral that was gifted by Durham Marks and Spencer's. Uh, and it depicts the Last Supper from a bird's eye view. In what form does the art take? Take does the artwork take? Is it, for example, a sculpture, or is it um, uh, a water feature? Is it a song? Oh, who knows? It's a form of artwork. And what is it? Is it a collage? Cool. Is it a collage? That's a very good suggestion, Jack. I thought of asking this might be what is the medium? Maybe. I was gonna write that, but I wasn't confident enough. Something tells me you're quite worried about people getting the answer of this one. Because you want them to get a particular kind of answer, I feel. Yeah, I feel like it is is a little bit too open, but no, it's fine. Question number question number seven. Question number seven. Which 1944 play featuring the Wingfield family was the first successful play by Tennessee Williams? Which 1944 play featuring the Wingfield family? was the first successful play by Tennessee Williams. Hmm. I have absolutely no idea. Uh, is Tennessee your favorite US state? Mm. Is Williams your favorite name? I want to get involved with that. Yeah, fair enough. We, we might come back to it if, if necessary, but I think we're going to move on to question number eight. Question number eight. What clear edible substance often used for stunts in film and television and wait, and filming and television and professional wrestling it was also used as a prop for methamphetamine in Breaking Bad? So what clear edible substance often used for stunts in film, film and television and professional wrestling was also used as a prop for methamphetamine in Breaking Bad? Well, right. Honestly, Jack, your eyesight. I realise what the issue is, is that the, the screen over there is like the Zoom box is covering up part of the word. Yeah, true. That could be an issue. It's all right. I'm sure it's fine. We'll deal. There's going to be some high scores in the room tonight. You reckon? Yeah. It's going to be hotly contested for the, for the bar tab. I'm looking around. You can see some intelligent faces. Yeah. Uh, question number nine. Oh, here we go. Here's, here's some text for you, Jack. I'll <laughs> re I think I'll read it out because I don't think you can realistically read that. Okay, so which popular exhibition space in Sunderland received this TripAdvisor review? Which popular exhibition sp space in Sunderland received this TripAdvisor review? So Darlow Foodie... Uh, wrote a review in May 2019 and said, interesting displays, but avoid the cafe. We're really interested to visit this place due to family connections with the former blank producers in Sunderland. The museum is open and airy with lots of interesting information and displays. The demonstrations are really worth attending, as is the shop. For a major centre, I suspect I was, uh, was expecting more in quantitative displays and information, but what is there is okay. It's really good, but it's also okay. Um, that's three stars, isn't it? That's a three-star review from Darlo, Darlo Foodie. Um, so that was a review from a... It's, it's a Sunderland ex exhibition space that fits the link is the, is the key part of that, I'd say. There is more to the review, but I couldn't fit it on the slide. That's incredibly niche. It's... Uh, maybe. But, you know, 
What do you expect? Come on, what do Vern Barkers, for heaven's sake? Leash is our middle name. That's we ran around on the Marlish <laughs> water last week. We did, we did. Uh, and of course, question number 10. What's the link? What's the link? What's the link that links the answers to the first nine questions? What's the link? Uh, we, it's, we've got people marking it. We haven't got like computers or anything because that would be ridiculous to organize. So if, if you can put generally what the answer is. And if, if you're right, then it is not like a word for word answer for this. I like to call them computers, though. Yeah, Alice. Yeah, it helps to put them in their place. Uh, thank you very much to our markers. We don't think you're machines. We do know your people, and we value you. Uh, I might nip through those questions again quickly. Maybe now, knowing the link, will help you get some of the early ones. So uh, we had uh, the item associated with a particular genre of fiction that is sometimes known as a hand lens. Then we had a 1979 hit by Debbie Harry and Chris Stein that was recently covered by Miley Cyrus. Uh, the words missing from this. Oh, so humorous Etsy gift. It's got a little hammer there as well. There's a little hammer swinging down. I wonder what that's for. Maybe that's a clue. Um, the name of the third book in the His Dark Materials series by Philip Pullman. Um, the fiber reinforced plastic sometimes referred to by the acronyms GRP and GFRP. Um, the form the artwork, artwork takes that is depicts the, uh, the last supper from a bird's eye view. Uh, the 1944 play featuring the Winkle family that was the first success successful play by Tennessee Williams. A clear edible uh, substance that is used for stunts and was also used uh, in place of meth in Breaking Bad. For some reason, I don't think they could afford that. I think that's quite expensive to get meth on every every episode. And this popular exhibition space in Sunderland that um, uh, Darlow Foody was expecting more in quantity of displays, but what is there is okay. And then of course, what's the link? What could link all nine of those things together? Honestly, it seems like we've got a, a plethora of, of genres in there. So there, there are so many things it could be. We'll see. Does anyone here, we haven't been able to ask this in a long time. What, any questions repeated? Looks like we're all right. There we go. So moving on with the next round, I suppose. I guess so. The next round is, this is by Annabelle. Thank you very much, Annabelle. This is Sounder Likes. Hmm, what could it be with this lovely stock image of a man trying to hear something? What we've got here is we've got 10 questions, and all the answers sound quite similar to each other. Uh, it's a bit of a ridiculous round. It's a bit of a stupid round, but they sound enough like each other. For example, uh, what do I say for example before I come up with an example? I do that quite often. Um, what, so like they rhyme with each other? They don't necessarily rhyme, but they sound similar. <laughs> okay, like yeah. for example, Brian and Brian and Beryllium. That's not a great example. Anyway, you, you'll get the bit, you'll get a hang of it. It just answered the question fundamentally. Question number one, which fictional character has aliases such as Heir of Isildur, True King of Gondor, and Ranger of the North? That's which, ridiculously small. Which fictional character has aliases such as Heir of Isildur, True King of Gondor, and Ranger of the North? I mean, if this is me reading that round out, I would have no hope. No, that's true. Uh-oh. <laughs> this is going to be a great time. Don't you worry. You relate to that man, Jack? I feel like you look you look a bit like that man. Um, I mean, I can see the similarity. Mm. You're, both, always, you're always struggling to hear things. <laughs> we both share a face, I guess. You share a face? Yeah, we both have a that face. sounds painful. <laughs> Question number two. Which ancient Greek mythical questing group included Jason, Heracles, Orpheus, and Atalanta? Which ancient Greek mythical questing group in included Jason, Heracles, Orpheus and Atalanta. And it sounds a bit like the others of the first one. They all sound sort of the same. Great. This is a, it's a, it's a very Annabelle round. Thank you very much, Annabelle. It's a great round. Right. Question number three, I guess? I guess so. We can come back to it. You can have a think about it during the answer to other ones if you get it quickly. Uh, question number three. Name the American state that is situated north of California and west of Idaho. Name the American state that is situated north of California and west of Idaho. Can I get them a clue? Uh, what's, what's your clue? It's not Tennessee. 
Is it not Tennessee? I didn't even give that away. But to be fair, I'm not I know the answer to the first two, but I don't reckon it sounds similar. It's all go. We've got lots of people watching. We've got lots of people here. It's a dream come true. It is actually your dream come true, isn't it? You? Didn't you dream this last night? I did. I had a weird dream last night. We don't need to go into it. Okay. <laughs> uh, question number four? Question number four. Which chemical element has the atomic number 18 and is the third most abundant gas in our atmosphere? What chemical element has the atomic number 18 and is the third most abundant gas in our atmosphere? As a history and Spanish student, I feel like you probably don't know the answer to this question. Oh, I have nothing. I have no clue with science. I'll tell you what my dream was. I dreamt. <laughs> no, I dreamt. Don't. I dreamt for some reason, the not particularly interesting dream, that uh, Marcus Rashford, a Manchester United footballer. You don't need to hear about dreams, you okay? I'll leave it there. All you need to know is that it involved Marcus, Ra <laughs> Marcus Rashford, a professional footballer. Um, there we go. Question number five. Who is the only named Acromantula in the Harry Potter series? They appear in the second and sixth books and films. Who is the only named Acromantula in the Harry Potter series? They appear in the second and sixth book and films. This is that's such an edible question. Yeah. He's wincing at me. I think it's I think it's fine. I think it's all, uh, yeah. I mean, I don't think there's another one. I got I don't know whether it's it's in the okay, yeah. I'm sure it's fine. I mean, it the, the clue is if you think there's another one, that it sounds like all the other ones. It's the one that sounds most similar to all your other answers in this round. You can message me, Jack. Okay. He's he's anticipating contention, but we do have a hard line here that if we think our answer is the answer. So if, position even if we're wrong, we're right. I mean, unless last time there was a bit of contention. I thought Peru drove on the right and they drove on the left. It's fine. We're over that now. We've all moved on. We're all still friends. Well, there we go. Um, that, that is, that's why we have to give the point to everyone who said that they drive on the right. Unfortunate. He just got it completely wrong. But it's, what, it says one thing. When you look it up on Google, what side do they drive in Peru? It says one. And then you read another article and it says the other. Every other article says something else. Living heck. Question, question number six. Which perennial herb is a flowering plant in the mint family? Which perennial herb is a flowering plant in the mint family? Fun thing is, Jack, what happens if my laptop dies? Is it not plugged in? <laughs> no, no. Why is it plugged in? I think it'll be fine. Yeah, I mean, if it, we'll just deal with it if it goes down. I mean, my, my laptop's hosting the Zoom call, so that's the most important thing. Oh, so it's a good time. So we might have to acapella some questions later, but it's fine. Question number seven, written by Christopher Paolini. What is the first book in the Inheritance Cycle book series? Written by Christopher Paolini, which is the first book in the Inheritance Cycle book series. A lot of literature questions in this round. A lot of literature. Isn't that, it's a, um, yeah, yeah, it's fine. You'll have to see it, don't worry. Um, maybe next week we'll have a round that's all about sport. No, it's <laughs> actually just that. Maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'd say a lot of this quiz this week is, is general knowledge. But as, as quizzes should be, really. <laughs> general knowledge is, and then a random round on, on Glee in the middle. Uh, so question number eight. Which carbonate mineral is one of the three most common naturally occurring crystal forms of calcium carbonate? C-A-C-O-3. C -A -C -O Which carbonate mineral is one of the three most common naturally occurring crystal forms of calcium carbonate? CaCO3. Well, do, do you know this one, one, Jack? We got there in the end. Yeah, of course I did. Do you know this one? Oh, good, yes. Oh, you do rocks as a degree. <laughs> what did you think? Well, you, I didn't know this. 
Um, so the reason we have a glee round, obviously, in round four is because that was the specialist round. It's been chosen by the winning team name. So the team with the winning name last week got to choose a round for this week. Uh, that will be the same. So the team with the winning name this week will get to choose one for next week. That could be someone online or it could be someone here. It's yes. exciting. It's all to play for. Question number nine. In the Elder Scrolls video game universe, which reptilian race are native to the Black Marsh? They're also known as Sax Saxleal. Oh, gosh. In the Elder Scrolls video game universe, which reptilian race are native to the Black Marsh? They're also known as the as the Saxleal. I've never played Skyrim, I'm afraid. I don't, I couldn't tell you, but is it not Skyrim? It's, no, it's, yeah, it's Skyrim. Okay. Sorry, sorry, that's a spoiler. But it's called Skyrim. I don't know. Hopefully all your answers sound relatively similar to each other. It's, it's quite loose. It's not like a certain number of letters away. They just, if you say it, and this old man might think that you're saying the same thing if you say two of them. Maybe. Anyway, uh, question number nine to finish. No, question number 10 to finish the round. Saragossa, Saragossa, however you like to say it, is the capital of which autonomous Spanish community? A woman from this region was famously divorced. Saragossa is the capital of which autonomous Spanish community? A woman from this region was famously divorced. I can really tell you're a Spanish student, you guys. Saragossa. I am a Spanish student. Jack's a geography student. BSC. So you need to know about us. BSC. BSC? It's very important clarification to make. Oh, because you don't, you don't do all the like happy things you just do. You could do fun, you could do interesting things about culture from around the world, but instead you just look at rain. I was doing rain today. I'm sure you were doing rain today. It doesn't surprise me at all. Right, I'll nip through those again. Which fictional character has aliases such as Eric Isildur, True King of Gondor, and Ranger of the North? Question number two. Uh, uh, the, which ancient Greek mythical questing group included Jason, Heracles, Orpheus, and Atalanta? No, uh, question number three, name the American state that is situated north of California and west of Idaho. Question number five, no, question number four. Uh, which chemical element has the atomic number 18 and is the third most abundant gas in our atmosphere? Question number five, who is the only named acromantula in the Harry Potter series? Question number six, which perennial herb is a flowering plant in the mint family? Question number seven, written by Christopher Paolini, which is the first book in the Inheritance Cycle book series? Question number eight, which carbonate mir mi mineral, I can't say mineral, is one of the three most common naturally occurring crystal forms of calcium carbonate? And in the Elder Scrolls video game universe, which reptilian race are native to the Black Marsh? And Zaragoza is the capital of which autonomous Spanish community? A woman from here was famously divorced. All very interesting. Hopefully you have done okay. Yeah, hopefully so, yeah. <laughs> I'm very excited for round three of you guys. I hope it's um, big enough for me to read. I thought I've untangled the mic so I can lean a bit closer if necessary. Oh, well, you can move closer to it or you can, Excite ex so exciting. Anyway, uh, I guess without any further ado, we will move on to, uh, to round number three. This round, Jack, I think you're gonna like the name of it. It's I'm very excited. Fact Calculator. Mm, I mean, I've seen, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. I was really happy with Fact Calculator. Yeah, no, it's good. It's good. It's very good. I okay, like so it. basically, we're gonna. Uh, although it's called fact calculator, please don't use a calculator. Calculators are not permitted. Uh, please do not bring calculator into this exam. Um, but still, write it on your phone, but don't open your calculator app, please. That's fine. Uh, so, how it's gonna work is we're gonna have a, an equation on screen, but but some of the questions are replaced with. Some of the some of the numbers are replaced with uh, questions. What? And therefore, it'll, you'll get the hang of it. For example, it might be number of letters in the word dog. Add um, number of eyes on the human body, and then that would be five. Three add two is five. All we want is the sum. Is the total? Is the to at the end? You'll get the hang of it. It's okay. So we don't. We don't care about the first numbers, we just want the total number. So Jack, can, can you yeah. read that? I can indeed. So that is the number of years of marriage celebrated by a pearl wedding anniversary, 
multiplied by the atomic number of copper. So the number of years of marriage celebrated by a fulfilled wedding anniversary multiplied by the atomic number of copper. So there you go, what do you think that one is? Mm, what could it be? I'm not very good at my almanac wedding anniversaries. That's okay. You're not married, it's okay. Uh, so you can, you can do your working, so that's fine. You don't have to do it in your head if you've, if you've got paper at home. I know it might be difficult for people here. Uh, but we don't, we don't need you to write down either of these numbers. We just want the final number. Just the final number. Yeah, so you might want to be working something in the background, potentially. Uh, I mean, whatever that is. Maybe, not, maybe if you're here, someone could get up a notes app and do some workings on that or something similar. So I think we should probably go straight on to question number two. Question number two. But well, you can keep thinking about these other ones in the background. Yeah. Uh, question number two. So that is the number of letters of the UK English alphabet that rhyme with plea. And the number of nations in the army that can <laughs> hold back the white stripes. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, the number of letters of the UK English alphabet that rhyme with plea. And the number of nations in the army that couldn't hold back the white stripes. Do you like that last one? No, not at all. Are you not a fan? I'm a fan of the song. I'm not a fan of the... What? Don't give away it's a song. Awful. Yeah, so just to clarify, we mean the UK alphabet. There is one letter of the alphabet that is sometimes pronounced differently depending on where you're from. We're going for the general way that someone from the UK would say the letters of the alphabet. I tried to mouth something at Jack, but I realised I'm wearing a mask. <laughs> no idea. Hopefully these equations themselves aren't challenging. Um, uh, I can't make that promise. <laughs> really? <laughs> so, I mean, they're all, all the answers are integers, just to get, put, get that out of there. All the answers are whole numbers, and they're all positive whole numbers. <laughs> Some of them are, no, it's fine. Question number three. Uh, question number three, uh, universal European emergency service number. Take away the number of sons of Jacob in Genesis. Uh, the Universal European Emergency Services number. Take away the number of sons of Jacob in Genesis. Coming to think of it, it's just quite a hard round. I mean, it's like having you basically answering twenty it's, questions. It's, yeah, <laughs> that's true. Actually, twenty-one as it happens. Oh no. <laughs> Is there a three-term expression? There might, be a, there might be a three-term expression, as you say. Oh, I can't believe it. Simon Forrest has just walked in. There he is. Oh, the man, the myth, the legend. Hi, Simon. <laughs> it's going well so far, I think, hopefully. <laughs> we're, only, we're only, what, three rounds in? So there's still plenty of time. Plenty of time. Uh, should we move on to question number four? Question number four. Uh, the year of the Los Angeles Summer Olympic Games divided by the number of days in July. So that is the year of Los Angeles, the year of Los Angeles Summer Olympic Games divided by the number of days in July. I hope you remember how to do chunking or, or the bus method, the bus stop method. I've no I haven't idea. done maths in a very long time. When did you stop doing maths, Hugo? I think I stopped doing maths a bit before I took my maths GCSEs. That's fair enough. So there we go. Just give that one a think. Move on swiftly. Move on to the next one, yeah. Uh, They're all whole numbers. That might help you with the division ones. Uh, so, yes, question number five. Question number five. The number of sovereign states in South America multiplied by the current... Oh, no, you got to help me with that word, Hugo. My eyes aren't good enough. The current tier of the lockdown tier. restrictions... Being imposed on Leicester. So the current tier of lockdown restrictions being imposed in Leicester. So that is the number of sovereign states in South America multiplied by the number of cur the current tier number of lockdown restrictions that are being imposed in Leicester. You got, there you in got the it. End. You got it. Well done. And by sovereign states in South America, I mean specifically the countries in South America, not including French Guyana, just to clarify, so there's no confusion. <laughs> people will argue about these things. It does catch people out, to be fair. So we, we don't, we, we're not including French Guyana as a sovereign state, because it's not. It's not a sovereign state, it's France. The so France is not one, is what I'm trying to say. Whew! Got there in the end, I did. 
So you're gonna have to think, write something down, hopefully, potentially, or maybe not, that's fine too. Uh, but yeah, and I guess, we can give that one a think if you're still thinking. Question number six. We, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll leave you more time after we've already told yeah. you all the questions, maybe. Question so, number six. So question number six is uh, Shakespeare's Shall I Compare Thee to a Summer's Day sonnet number plus the number of core. core of what? The number of core par family members in The Incredibles. Hang on, I know how I can fix this issue. Yeah. Jack's got, um, currently got our cat. He's, he's looking at it, uh, the laptop screen from about four meters away. And there's a black block uh, blocking some of the text, so he can't actually read it. So he's just going to remedy that situation quickly. But what a trooper, honestly. Giving his eyes such a workout. View. I can see now. That was quite a key word as well. Sometimes they're fine, I can just like infer, but not this time. Mm, yeah, sorry. Okay. Um, so, I mean... So far, we've just seen pluses, minuses, multiplication, and division. Oh, surely it can't get any more difficult than that. No, not, not just yet. Not just yet. That was very ominous. Question number seven. Uh, so the number of national parks in England take away the number of cities in Wales. So the number of national parks in England take away the number of cities in Wales. Give that one some thought. I suppose, I suppose actually, some it might be harder having a a minus or a plus one because then you don't get any, any clues. Like with division, you, you know it's going to be divisible. That's very true. I feel like if anyone gets full marks in this round, I will. I'll it will be very impressive. I'll yeah. personally be very impressed. You can you can come to Jack and say I got full marks in that round, and he will personally, personally give you twenty pounds. No, not true. I'm not yeah, I can assure you. Just come up to Jack and ask for twenty pounds, and that's he'll he'll give it to you. I I don't want to make any commitments there. Um. There we go. Question number eight, I suppose. Question number eight. Question number eight, so that is the view, uh, the year of the Great Fire of London divided by the number in the name of the San Francisco-based American football team. Uh, the year of the Great Fire of London divided by the number in the name of a San Francisco-based American football team. I think definitely the easy side of this round is writing it, because I could just write it and then put it in a calculator and see what it was. That's very um, true. Is the, isn't that the easy part of most rounds? I don't know. Not tell what, not that limericks round we did. <laughs> That's very true. The medieval lyrics one as well. Oh, true. Yeah. What a time. Okay, so yeah, that one's before. A class, the class, a classic year in history. The year of the Great Fire of London. Yeah, it's a big one. The year before was quite um, significant as well because that was the. Uh, is this giving away? That was the year of the World Cup or something. No. No, I, no, it's a different year. Can I spoil it? No, you can't. No, you can't. <laughs> no, 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 not spoil it, but like. No, I don't think so. That's fine. Uh, question number nine. You can spoil it at the end. Question number nine. Oh, uh, so we might have to explain what some of the, the positioning on screen means, but that's okay, Jack. See if you can work out what that means. Okay, so, oh, yeah, okay. So that is Bee Gees and Spice Girls to the power of. Oh, no, it's too small for me. The number of pints in a gallon. Number of pints in a gallon. So Bee Gees add Spice Girls to the power of number of pints in a gallon. So the number of Bee Gees plus the number of Spice Girls, like originally of both, and then both, and then that's in brackets. So that first, and then to the power of number of pints in a gallon. Not convoluted at all. It's fine. <laughs> I'm sure they know that. I'm sure you, it's fine. I'm sure it's fine. Yeah, you'll do fine. You know. Um. How many was this the when you typed in calculator background? Was this the first thing that came up? No, I I, I actually went through quite a few. The, I, I just found a picture of a calculator and then just made it so it looked like it was happening on the screen. Like it looks like I just actually typed that into a calculator, doesn't it, Jack? You can't you can barely tell I just edited, I just put it text or thumb. That must have taken you so long. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you now, this number is very big. Well, I hope that doesn't spoil anything. That doesn't spoil anything. No, the answer is not very big. Uh, the answer ideally is a number. But anyway, question question number 10. Oh my God. Okay, hang on. Can I you can, read it? I can make it. Uh, question number 10 is the number of human... Human males in the mystery crew yeah, from Scooby-Doo. It's... No, that, well, that's... Hang okay, on, no, that's, that's the square root thing, or whatever, the root thing. So we've got the year that James Polk became the first president to have his photo taken to the... Uh, I don't know how to say this. Okay, so 
Right, so it's like square root, but what the root power thing, I'm not a mathematician, can you tell, is the number of human males in the mystery crew. So it's like the 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 number of human males in the mystery crew through root of the year that James Polk became the first president to have his photo taken. It's not complicated at all, it's fine. It's and it's, like, it's, it's a whole number as well. It's like the nth root where n is first part. The nth root, yeah, that's good. Yeah, I like that. So it's the nth root of the year that James Polk became the first president to have his photo taken, where n is the number of human males in the mystery crew. He, he did A-level, can you tell? He did A-level maths. <laughs> that's what they teach in A-level maths, like a little extra bit of info. Nth root, who would have thought? That's genius. Uh, I don't have long to leave at this one. I'll, I'll, I'll run through them again so you can have a little reminder. So the number of years uh, of marriage celebrated by a pearl wedding anniversary times the atomic number of copper. Then the number of letters of the English, of the UK English alphabet that rhyme with plea, plus the number of nations in the army that couldn't hold back the white stripes. Question number three, uh, the universal European emergency services number take away the number of sons of Jacob in Genesis. Question number four, the year of the Los Angeles Summer Olympic Games divided by the number of days in July. Question number five, the number of sovereign states in South America times the current tier of lockdown restrictions being imposed on Leicester. Question number six, Shakespeare's Shall I, Pair the, Shall I Compare You to a Summer's Day sonnet number plus the number of core family members in The Incredibles. Uh, question number five, the number of national parks in England take away the number of cities in Wales. Question number eight, the year of the Great Fire of London uh, divided by the, the number in the name of a San Francisco-based American football team. Uh, question number nine, Bee Gees plus Spice Girls to the power of pints in a gallon. And question number 10, the nth root of the year that James Polk became the first president to have his photo taken, where N is the number of human males in the mystery crew. Wow. Oh gosh, I'm really sorry about this round. It's quite tricky as it goes. Do, do people here need more time or? Looks looks like there isn't there isn't calls for more time, so we might swift move on. on. But you can have another, you can as we do the round, we can continue thinking of it. So the next round Can't is believe it. Is we from the sublime to the ridiculous, we just had lots of big numbers. And now we've got a round on Glee. What happened basically at the last quiz, the winner of the best team name, which was uh, BBC Children. No, who was it? Who won last time? Uh, it was I can't remember. I can't remember. Very, thank you if you did one win. They chose a specialist round and they chose it on Glee. So here is 10 questions about NBC, I don't know, whoever it was, his hit show, Glee. You wrote a lot of rounds this week. Uh, you wrote some cards, It's a good time. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, so question number one about Glee. Question number one, the setting for Glee is an Ohio high school, which a US president assassinated in 1901 is the high school named after. Uh, there you go. You know, the setting for Glee is uh, an Ohio uh, high school. Which US president assassinated in 1901 is the high school named after? So this question is then accessible to people that know Glee and people that know their American presidents really well. Yeah, because everyone I think either has watched Glee or knows American presidents really well. Yeah, we should have You're always either one or the other. Yeah, exactly. Hopefully that time you watched Glee that once. Uh, well, have, you, have you watched Glee before? I have never watched a single episode in my life. Oh, well, <laughs> you're missing out. I'll tell you what. Um, yeah, I did have a, a, a lot of a big look at the um, the Glee fandom wiki uh, uh, for this round, but I also didn't have to look at as much as I I should have done. <laughs> I mean, that's up. You know, that's fine. That's like, fine as well. That's fine as well. Okay. Question number two. The show choir competition circuit in which the New Directions, the group from Glee, uh, compete, starts with sectionals, ends with nationals. What competition comes between the two? So the show choir, show choir competition circuit in which the New Directions compete starts with sectionals, ends with nationals. But what competition comes between the two? What comes between the sectionals and nationals? Hmm. Maybe it's also something geographical. Hmm. Who knows? So we'll try. We'll try and get through at a decent rate. Because obviously, for the winners who have their twenty pound bar tab, we will want to make sure you can enjoy. Yes, good point. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Question number three. 
We're still getting used to this physical quiz. Uh, I'm just, I'm just going to say to avoid any contention that in the, the for UK English, the last letter of the alphabet is pronounced Z. In case it comes up, pronounce Z. I think we're all on the same page. Uh, question number three. Former Glee Club member and antagonist of Will Schuster, Brian Ryan, is portrayed by which star of Doogie Howser MD and How I Met Your Mother? Former Glee Club member, former Glee Club member and antagonist of Will Schuster, Brian Ryan, is portrayed by which star of Doogie Howser MD and How I Met Your Mother? Do you have any idea, Jack? Um, I actually probably have more of an idea than I thought I would have for this question. There you go. That's what, like, we'd like to make it a little bit more accessible. I've seen How I Met Your Mother, so. I can maybe have, um, have you. Are you telling me you haven't seen Doogie Howser MD? No, I haven't. For whatever well, reason. I'm sure it's brilliant. Have you not seen it yourself? Uh, I haven't seen it, but I'm sure it's brilliant. It's about a child prodigy doctor oh. called Doogie Howser, I guess. Uh, uh, yeah. Question number four Which song performed by the New Directions closed the pilot episode? In real life, the Glee Class version of the song reached the top five in the US, UK, Australia, and Ireland. Which song performed by the New Directions closed the pilot episode? In real life, the Glee cast version of the song reached the top five in the US, UK, Australia, and Ireland. What about this one, Jack? Do you know this one? I bet you know this one. Oh, um, no, not at all. Absolutely no, really? no clue at all. No idea whatsoever. Sorry to say, though. Oh, that's okay. Come to everyone. Uh, I'll just move on. I think people might know that if they know it. Question number five. Glee star and the most attractive man in the world, Darren Chris. Uh, uh, I don't know who wrote this. Probably not me. Uh, appeared as Andrew Kananen in the eighteen in the twenty eighteen American crime story dramatization of the assassination of which fashion giant? Uh, I use giant in the metaphorical sense, not like a, a biological giant. I think I uh, one. Glee star and the most attractive man in the world, Darren Chris, appeared as Andrew Kunanen in the eight in the twenty eighteen. American crime story dramatization of the assassination of which fashion giant? As I've heard suggestions that George Clooney is the sexiest man in the world. I mean, if you've seen, if you've seen Darren Chris, honestly, but is there something? Is there anything he can't do? I don't know who this person is. There is one thing he can't do, and that's disappoint me. <laughs> okay. Next question. If he if he like in the last hours does something really horrendous, I'm really sorry. Next question. <laughs> Moving swiftly on. Question number six. Who was the what was the original quote from Glee antagonist Sue Sylvester that stemmed this meme format? What was the original quote from Glee antagonist Sue Sylvester that stemmed this meme format? I've got a picture of Sue Sylvester and it says, I'm going to create a specialist round that is so glee focused. So I'm going to create a blank that is so blank. And we want you to write the full the full quote, please. It's, it's been a meme that I've seen crop up, crop up a lot on Twitter, so well, maybe I'm, you know this. In, on the Glee forums? I've yeah, no, I'm, 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 I'm obviously on Glee Twitter. <laughs> so what's the full quote? She's going to create a something that is so something. Mm-hmm, what could it be? Uh, Jack's doing me eyebrows as if I should move on to question number seven. So question number seven. Uh, season five, episode six of Glee, Moving Out, is dedicated to which singer-songwriter? Songs performed in the episode include My Life and An Innocent Man. Uh, I've got a strange question mark used there, but it's fine. Season five, episode six of Glee, Moving Out, is dedicated to which singer-songwriter? Songs performed in the episode include My Life and An Innocent Man. Interesting. I have absolutely no idea again. I would have done very badly. Do you know what I did? This is just a music question. I know a song called My Life. I don't think it's. Hmm. I don't think it's by this. I don't think this person will be in, in like dedicated. To I think you're thinking of My Way by Frank Sinatra. I'm not at all, but fair, fair enough. Interesting. So it's a real life singer songwriter who has songs, including My Life and an Innocent Man. It might help. Uh, question number eight. Which song does Principal Figgins introduce as blank and also blank? Uh, by rapper K Dollar Sign Her. Which song does Principal Figgins introduce as blank and also blank by rapper K Dollar Sign Her? I, he doesn't say blank. I just blank that out because I think it would make the question too obvious. Well, as it is, I've got no idea again. So, Things like what? so maybe name a song by rapper K Dollar Sign Her. <laughs> oh yeah, in that case, I, I could probably do it then. Do, do you, of, no. 
K, who, Jack, who could it be referring to when it says K dollar sign her? Oh. <laughs> I think that might, I think we're on the same wavelength now. That's good. Question number nine. Which of the following is the name of the actor who played Sam Evans? Which of the following is the name of the actor who played Sam Evans? Is it A, Drum Underwalk, B, Crash Thundertown, C, Cord Overstreet, or D, Sam Evans? A, Drum Underwalk, B, Crash Thundertown, C, Cord Overstreet, or D, Sam Evans? I'm not sure which of those four is more ridiculous. I don't know, would you like to, would you like to change your name to Crash Thundertown? That's Maybe. actually the verb Barker's middle name. <laughs> Maybe, we'll see. Oh, I just remember what question 10 is. We, we love it. We love it. It's a good time. Okay. Question, question number 10. Another famous glee club is the Royal Hawaiian Girls Glee Club. It was founded in 1917, and the groups became the resident performers at the Royal Hawaiian Hotel in 1927. They were likely a source of great entertainment for the guests. Often accompanied by, Hawa by Hawaiian entertainment, similarly, what term describes a Hawaiian party or feast? Another famous glee club is the Royal Hawaiian Girls Glee Club. It was founded by, in 1917, and the groups became the resident performers at the, Ro at the Royal Hawaiian Hotel in 1927. They were likely a source of great entertainment for the guests. Often accompanied by Hawaiian entertainment, what term describes a Hawaiian party or feast? Give that some thought. You may or may not. Get, get some deja vu. That might not may have been. Mm. Uh, I'll run through those again quickly. So very quickly, we've got an American president assassinated in 1901. We've got what comes between sectionals and nationals. Um, we've got the star who plays Brian Ryan. Which star play, plays him? He was also in Duke Hazard, Remedy and How I Met Your Mother. Question number four. Uh, what song, the, what, the Glee cast version, what song were top five in the US, UK, Australia, and Ireland? Question number five. Um, who, Darren Chris plays Andrew Kanan the dramatization of the assassination of which fashion giant? Which fashion giant we want there? Uh, what was the original quote, the whole quote from Glee for this? I'm going to create a blank that is so blank. Um, question number seven. Moving Out is an episode dedicated to which singer-songwriter? Some people in the episode include My Life and an Innocent Man. Question number eight. Which song was Principal Figgins introduced as blank and also blank by rapper K dollar sign her? Question number nine. Which actor plays Sam Evans? Drum Underwalk, Crash Thunder Town, Cord Over Street, or Sam Evans? And question number 10. Often accompanied by Hawaiian entertainment, what term describes a Hawaiian party or feast? And there we go. Now it is time for the wipeout round. Oh. We love the a wipeout, wipeout round here at Hillby. Jack, how does the wipeout round work? So a wipeout round works as follows. So you're going to be given 10 seemingly, well, no, they actually are general knowledge questions. Um, but the they're not seemingly, they're completely general knowledge. The difference is this time is that if you get an answer wrong, you write it down, you'll get zero points for the entire round. So you have to be very confident on the answers that you put down, because any answers that are wrong that you put down will wipe you out for the whole round. So confidence is key. It's a big differential this round, so only, only put it if you're really sure. If you leave a question blank, that's fine. And, or you can, you, can, you can always leave a question blank on the Google form as well. So question number one, Jack. Which tree common in the UK is also known as a mountain ash? So which tree common in the UK is also known as a mountain ash? Our featured film today is, of course, Scared Shrekless, a Halloween spin-off of the Shrek franchise. You don't need to know that. That's not relevant to the questions, but if, if you're wondering, good time. Okay, that's okay. good, question two. Question number two, here we go. For question number two, the festival of Purim, uh, Purim? I couldn't tell you. Uh, is celebrated in which religion? Uh, this year, it took place on the 9th to the 10th of March. So this celebration took place on the 9th of to 10th of March this year. What religion is it in? I'm not entirely sure about this one. I definitely wouldn't put it down. It's risky. Yeah. You know, maybe you want to claw that extra point. But it's so... Don't well, this, round, this round also brought to us by Annabelle. Thank you very much, Annabelle. And as an Annabelle wipe wipeout round is particularly fiendish. Thank you very much. Hopefully you've got a vague idea. I mean, I haven't, to be honest, but hopefully you do. Question number three. Question number three, who wrote the critically acclaimed play A Streetcar Named Desire? Who wrote the critically acclaimed play A Streetcar Named Desire? So this is one for, I guess, all of you theatre fans out there. 
because <laughs> I guess so. Um, this, as you can tell, this film um, shared scared Shrekless. I don't really understand the pun on that, but it's fine. Um, came from a selection of uh, DreamWorks Halloween shorts, including, as you can see, some spin-offs of Monsters vs. Aliens. I'm sure it's available on eBay. See, I, I remember Shrek the Halls. I've seen Shrek the Halls. Shrek the Halls is a classic, yeah. Do you not know about Scared Shrek? I've, I've never seen just Scared Shrek. It's hard to say. Question number four? Question number four. Uh, the spiral shapes of sunflowers follow which type of sequence? The spiral shapes of sunflowers follow which type of sequence? Or it might be more accurate to say the spiral shapes of sunflowers follow which sequence? Um, so, Shrek the Halls, mm -hmm. um, I think it's probably the example of the perfect Christmas movie. The perfect Christmas, that's, that's high praise. In it, it gives you a, an entertaining plot line while also giving you a moral lesson. Because I know you're also personally quite the kind of a Muppet's Christmas Carol. Oh, I'm a huge fan of Muppet's Christmas Carol. So, that, so that's, that's, a, that's a bold claim, honestly, about Shrek the Halls. Question number five? <laughs> I guess so. Question number five. Uh, question number five. The Horrible History Cleopatra song is a parody of a song by which female solo artist? The Horrible History Cleopatra song is a parody of a, of a song by which female solo artist? Ah, uh, we love a Horrible History question here. We do love a Horrible History question. We've got to work it in where, you, where we can. So hopefully you've got an idea about this. Dan, if you think you know confidently enough. Very true. Uh, question number six. Question number six. Which professional footballer has scored the most goals in history? Which professional footballer has scored the most goals in history? To clarify, by scored the most goals in history, we don't mean just like he was in his garden and scored loads of goals. This was, these were goals in a professional setting. Which professional footballer has scored the most goals in history in a professional setting? Hmm, who could it be? This is definitely going to be contentious, isn't it? I was, it's almost definitely going to be. There are a lot of different categories that come to this. Huh? There are a lot of different categories, I think. This is like international level, national level. Scored the most goals in history in professional settings, I'm going to say. Okay. Let's hope, let's hope so, anyway. <laughs> All right, question number seven. Question number seven. Uh, name one of the countries that use purple in their flag. Name one of the countries that use purple in their flag. We are after one of the two modern day countries that flag, that their flag contains even the smallest bit of purple. That's a very stressful question. It is quite. I feel like this is going to be contentious as well. Oh, these are all going to be contentious for you guys. It's okay. We love a wipeout where, like, we don't know who, but there could be about three different people who's won, depending on what we say. It's a great time. Question number eight. Question number eight. Which Austrian physicist named the change in frequency of a wave in relation to an observer who is moving relative to the wave source? Which Austrian physicist named the change in frequency of a wave in relation to an observer who is moving relative to the wave source? We, we're, we only need, need a surname. You can, give the, you can give the first name if you want to, but, but we're only after the surname. Good stuff. Nearly there. Two questions, two, yeah, two questions left. Two questions only left. Only two. The only two left. Let's move on to the, one of them. Which UNESCO World Heritage Site is located on a tidal island in Normandy, France? Which UNESCO World Heritage Site is located on a tidal island in Normandy, France? What could it be? I've never been. You've never been to this tidal island in Normandy, France? No, I'd like to go there. I bet you would. Jack loves places. He's a geography man. Ah, oh, well, that is a shame. Well, it, let's just add it to the series. At the, the, at the very, yeah, we're, we're, we're ready for controversies. It's any, all we know is it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site on a tidal island somewhere near France. We, we like to save all our controversial questions for the wipeout round. The wipeout round works really stressful because, <laughs> because that could mean people wipe out. It's a great time. We may maybe one day we'll implement questions in the wipeout that you can't wipe out on. I can imagine how the location of a an island could be contentious. Uh, however, we are going to go with 
Um, yeah, mm, it's difficult. Yeah. yeah. What does Google say? What does Google say it is? Uh, Google is very mixed. <laughs> it's like, it's it's like all over again. If you're thinking of a UNESCO and host site, a tide line in, in uh, northwest France, you're probably thinking of the right one. Hopefully so. Uh, question number 10. There we go. This is also going to be contentious. Oh, dear. Jack is up there. Um, according to Greek mythology, which three animals made up the body of a chimera? <laughs> Animal just sent me a message saying, I'm fully confident of my wipeout round. Anyone who contends the answers can fight me. So there we go. So that is, that is confidence from Annabelle. Wow. That's what we like to hear. There we go. So I guess it's completely true. Thank you very much, Annabelle, once again. Uh, I'll nip through this very quickly. So we're after the, uh, the question number one was the, the tree that is commonly known as a mountain ash. Uh, then we're after the religion which celebrates Purim. Purim. And then we're after the question number three, the uh, playwright of A Streetcar Named Desire. Question number four, the sequence that a sunflower fo follows. Um, the Horror History is clear about the song is parody, the song by which female solo artist? Question number six, which professional footballer has scored the most goals in history? Hey, Jack, do you want to look up that question while we, <laughs> while we go? Let's cross that bridge when we get to it. That sounds good. We might have to, if it's really contentious, we might make it a wipeoutless question, but we'll, we'll hopefully not. Uh, question number seven, name one of the countries that uses purple in their flag. Question number eight, which Austrian physicist uh, named the change in frequency of a wave in relation to an observer? And um, et al. Um, which UNESCO World Heritage Site is near France? And question number 10, according to Greek mythology, which three animals make up the body of a chimera? And that's the quiz. So if you're here, and you, you've got all your answers, send them in. Hi. Yeah. Sunflowers was question four. Sunflowers was question four. So when you're done here, submit your answers and we'll get our markers will get on it. Yeah, and then we will zip through the answers because we want to give the winners as much time as possible with their barter before the burn closes. The people at home, you're marking yourself. Um, so you're not eligible for the 20 pound bar tab, I'm afraid, but you are eligible for a great time. Well said. Well, we'll go, I think we're going to implement a classic hillbeat wave. So if you, Simon's going to point the camera around the room and we're all going to wave very cheerily in honour of, of hillbeat. Wave. And at the back, where's the waving? <laughs> Wait for Hill B, it's got to be done. Brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> and first time before on Instagram, we already. So it's a great watch and a great time. Okay. We've got to do it again. It didn't work very well. We're going to do waving again. Go, wave, wave, wave. 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 <laughs> Nothing forced about that whatsoever. <laughs> so natural. <laughs> Thank you. And here we go. Thank you very much to Simon. Busy. Uh, here we go with the answers. So hopefully everyone here has submitted their answers, submit their answer sheets. We've got our crack team of, of workers on that. Hopefully. Hopefully. Um, hopefully it will all work out. But here we go. Um, it's time for the answers. So the genre of fiction, this of course, this first one was a magnifying glass. A hand lens is a magnifying glass. Question number two, the Debbie Harry and Christine hit was Heart of Glass. Maybe you can see what the link is. Heart of Glass. Oh, I'm a big fan of this cover, but you know, each their own. Question number three, uh, the words missing from this humorous Etsy gift were, in case of emergency, break glass. Ha 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 ha. In case of emergency, break glass. That's what we wanted. Question number four. The third book in his dark materials is the Amber Spy Glass. What could the link be? Amber Spy Glass. Question five. Which fiber reinforced plastic is sometimes referred to by the acronyms GRP or GFRP? It's fiberglass. Nicely done if you've got that. Fiberglass. Question number six. Um, this is called the something window. Anyway, it's a stained glass window. It's in a cathedral and it's a piece of art. It's a stained glass window. 
Uh, question number seven. The 1944 play was The Glass Menagerie. The Glass Menagerie. Question number eight. This used in, as a prop, prop for methamphetamine is sugar glass. Sugar glass. So I've got an idea you might know what the link is. Potentially. Uh, this, of course, was the inimitable this glass produced in the family. National Glass Centre. The National Glass Centre in Sunderland. What a place. If you haven't been, you really must. I'm sure it's lovely. And of course, the link is glass. They all have the word glass in. So the link is glass. For everyone who got that. Do it sound like? Do you want to read that, Liz? Yeah, let's do it. So, question number one the answer, of course, was Aragorn. That was number one. Question number two is. Uh... We're not too fussy about spelling. I wouldn't worry too much. Uh, question number two is Argonauts. So, that's Argonauts. Question number three that is, of course, Oregon. Oregon, of course. Tell me, if you're an old man, maybe these all sound the same to you. <laughs> Question number four is Argon. Argon. Question number five is Aragog. Uh, question number six is Oregano, I guess. Uh, question number seven is Aragon. Uh, question number eight is Aragonite. Did you know this? Aragonite. Uh, you said yeah. you did. Yeah, I did, yeah. Oh, nice. Uh, question number nine is my degree. Uh, question number nine is uh, Argonian. Argonian. Uh, and question number ten is, of course, Aragon. Without of course, the, the famous woman, Big Catherine of Aragon. Yeah, famously divorced. Okay, I'm going to have to get my phone out now because I've got to write some answers. Sure, it's fine. We're all very excited to see what the round, the answers to this round are. Hang on, just dealing with something. Uh, just making sure they actually, the markers can actually mark. <laughs> can they mark? Uh, hopefully so. I'm just going to... That would be ideal if they can actually mark. So you just bear with us while that gets sorted. Um, do you want to start going... Do we start going to the answers, Hugo? Um, it should be okay. Um, okay, looks like they've got it. That's fine, it's all good. Okay, back on good. track. Okay, hopefully that's fine. So, the number of years, uh, the number of years of marriage celebrated by Pearl Wedding is 30 years, and the atomic number of copper is 29, so it's 870. Question number 800, we just want the answer 870. Question number two, there are eight plea rhymes in the alphabet, eight plea rhymes, we're not counting Z, we're not calling it a Z. And it's, of course, the Seven Nation Army that couldn't hold back the White Stripe. So that is 15. Uh, the Universal Euro European Emergency Services number is 112. And the number of sons of Jacob is 12. So the answer is 100. 100, plain and simple. Uh, the year of the Los Angeles Summer Olympic Games divided by the number of days in July, that is 1984, divided by 31, it's 64. 64. The number of sovereign states in South America is 12, and Leicester is currently in tier two, not tier three, tier two. So it's 24. Cool. Uh, question three Shall I compare me to a summer's day? is from Sonnet 18, and there are five paths in The Incredibles. There are five of them three children, two parents. So 23 is the answer. 23. Uh, the number of national parks in England is 10, and there are six Welsh cities. You can look it up yourself. I can't, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. But that means there are, the answer is four. Um, 10 take away six is four. Uh, the year of the Great Father London was, of course, 1666, and it's the San Francisco 49ers. So it's 1666 divided by 49, that is 34. 34. So there are three BGs, five Spice Girls, to the power of eight pints. It's 16,777,216. Very well done, if you've got that at home. Ridiculous. 16,777,216. Um, question number 10. There are two human males in the mystery crew, so it's just a square root. After all that faff, it was just a square root after all. And the first photo of James K. Polk was in 1849. So the answer is 43. 
43. Very well done if you got that. If you were doing in your head uh, square rooting, that's very impressive. Then we have our glee round, Jack. Okay, so the answer to the glee round are as follows. Question number one is, oh, that's way too saturated. To be William McKinley. William McKinley. Shall I read out these ones? I think they're all like that. Uh, no, I'll be all right, I think. Uh, question number two is uh, regionals, sectionals, regionals, and nationals. Yeah. Uh, question number three is, of course, uh, Neil Patrick Harris. Neil Patrick Harris. Uh, question number four, uh, the answer to that is, don't stop believing. A classic Lee version. Classic Lee. Uh, question number five is uh, uh, the Gianni Versace. Gianni yeah. Versace. Uh, question number six is, I'm going to create an environment that is so toxic. I'm there going to create an environment that is so toxic. Good, good old Sue, what a wholesome figure. Uh, question number seven is, uh, of course, Billy Joel. Billy Joel there. Question number eight is uh, TikTok. It's actually going to be, I, 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 I miscapitalized that somewhat, but it's fine. He, he's, he introduces it as a tick and also talk by rapper K dollar sign her. It's a great time. Uh, question number nine is, of course, uh, Cord Overstreet. It is, of course, Cord Overstreet. It's a good time. Not any of the others, it's Cord Overstreet. What a name. And this is, of course, as it may have been before, Luau. It was Luau. Hooray, nicely done if you got that. Not, <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. Uh, the tree common in the UK as mountain ash is the Rowan. I made it trap. Is Rowan, the Rowan tree. Then the first little Purim is from Judaism. Uh, Streetcar Named Desire was written by a friend of the show, as he was already mentioned, Tennessee Williams. Tennessee Williams. Reminder, if you get one question for this wrong, I'm afraid you've wiped out. A spiral shape follows the Fibonacci sequence. The Fibonacci sequence. The Horror History's Cleopatra song is a parody of a Lady Gaga song, or, or general Lady Gaga. Uh, the professional footballer, here we go, is Yosef Bikan. Yosef Bichan. Any, any, any arguments of that? Uh, any, what, who's your suggestion? Uh, I'm afraid, no. Well, Annabelle says she will fight you, so I'm afraid you may have to take that with her. Uh, question number seven. Uh, the two countries are Dominica and Nicaragua. They've got, they've got little parts on their crests. Dominica and Nicaragua. Uh, this is, of course, Christian Doppler. You can have Doppler, it's fine. Christian Doppler. Question number nine is Mont Saint Michel. Mont Saint Michel. Uh, there is sometimes, so there you go. Well, I'm English and I don't know a lot of things. Question number 10 the three animals we're after are the lion, the goat, and snake. Lion, goat, and snake. Phew, that's it. Have you made the post? The SRC post, Jack? Yeah, I'm about to make it. So if you're watching online, go to the Hillbead SRC uh, Facebook page and Jack will make a post and you can comment your team name and your score on it. Done. And... Okay, so we'll wait for the... Hopefully the scores can come in. Oh, we've got the, we've got the scores already. That's brilliant. That's okay. So what we can do is we can sort out the bar tab and get that sorted and then we can do the, the, like, the people watching the live stuff as well. Do the bar, do that first, do this stuff in here first. Uh, sorry, what's happening? We'll do this, we'll do the answer we just got first. Okay, so, the winning team, we'll do the team names afterwards, actually. The winning team from here, and the winner of the Vern Bartab is... White go place, it's a very well unto you. You you are the winners of a twenty pound bar tab. So I don't know how that's gonna work. So I'm gonna so yep, I'm gonna go up and deliver the twenty pound bar tab. I'll tell them what table you're at. Um so yeah, they'll come over to you and you can yeah, do it. So I'll sort that out if you go if you wanna great stuff. I'll be like Okay, so that's the very well known to the winners. We will shortly tell you the winners of um, the online watches and the winners of the uh, team name competition to so the get to pick a special round.
Reminder, if you're watching at home, to comment your team names on the post in Hillbeat SLC. Uh, it was, by the looks of things, 38 points was the winner. Uh, I will be able to tell you that later on once I can see the Google form, but currently we've got other people on it. For you, there we go. First quiz sorted. So how are the, are the things coming in from online as well? Uh, we have a couple. People doing okay? People doing okay? Glad people have... Uh, uh, so I've well. got I've got some of the team names, some of the best the best team names from here, and some of the best team names from online, and you can tell me your favourite of them. Yes, Remember sounds that? good. Uh, so we had uh, the team name French toast is just to toast with tongue. I like that one as a team name. Um. We had two different teams uh, put their team name as Vern Baby Vern Disco Inverno, which is, is strong to be fair. It's strong, but we great. love love the Vern. You have a third one for me? Uh, yeah, there's there's two called Vern Baby Vern. I don't want to have that. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm trying that. to see. Okay. Um. <laughs> Um, I'm going to create a glass window that is so stained. Hmm. I don't know. It's a bit. It's a tricky one. I don't know. I'll, um, potentially, I feel like I'm leaning towards um, the first one. The first one, which was French toast is just toast with tongue. There we go. Is that what we're going for? I don't know. I'm not. Go for it. Why not? Yeah, why not? Yeah. Uh, so they've chosen the Lord of the Rings extended editions as their specialist round. So come back next week for a, a round on Lord of the Rings extended editions. Exciting there we go. times. Uh, the winner of uh, the quiz overall, I believe. Oh, no, jo the, there are two joint winners. But the winner of the online competition is I'm going to create a glass window that is so stained with 38 points. Uh, Jack, uh, the prize is Jack is going to now tell you some words of wisdom. Well, I'd just like to say to the winning team, um, very well done on your efforts. Wise and, words, yeah. Um, I hope that you have every, everything happens well for you. That's me. nice. And a tip for life, perhaps? Um, don't walk before you can run. Oh, that's amazing. Don't walk before you can run from the social sec himself, Jack Rawdon. Come back again next week but another no not next week next week is the halloween formal there is no quiz next week is the halloween formal but the week after that we'll be back here we'll have a round on lord of the rings and it will be a great time thank you very much for coming that's all we've got here thank you thank you so there we go so Jack, do you want to go and end the stream uh yes i do they do that stuff too all right thank you very much